very difficult. Okay, um, when I got <laughs> when I got my first question uh, in that exam, I was about to give up right there. First question, but I thought, you know what? Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Daniel here. You saw in the title of this video that I passed my basic drone exam, advanced exam, and the flight review. So I put that in the title not to boast myself, but to let you know that what I'm going to present in the next few minutes is the stuff you need to do to pass the exam. And that's exactly what I did and I succeeded the first time. So I think I'm going to give you very valuable information this video is going to be in three parts first will be the what you need to do for the basic drone operation exam and pass it what you need to do for the advanced operation license and finally third item what you need to do to succeed with your flight review which is the practical exam i'll put the links in my not the links but the time uh, for each section in the video description <clears throat> first of all one thing that is common to both the basic license and the advanced license or operations license is that you need two things you need two monitors or two laptops or a laptop and your desktop but you have to have two monitors if you don't you're going to waste time and for sure you will not pass the advanced exam you need two monitors you have the exam on the side screen that's not important the exam side screen what is important is your front screen where you will do your research uh, you'll have to do google research you'll have to have your transport canada a regulation page open and a few things i'm going to mention in a few minutes so two screens exam your searches and a notepad where you're going to write the question number that you did quickly and you're not sure so that at the end you know where to go back to have a second look if you have time left in your exam so let's have a look at what you need to do for the basic operations ten dollars you can write anytime you want uh, 35 questions in 90 minutes and you need 65 percent to pass you have 90 minutes 65 percent if you follow what i'm going to tell you now you will have you will have for sure at least 75 percent to pass i guarantee it okay first thing regulations you need to read the regulations and that will take you basically maybe like two weeks to study before you try the exam so regulations you need to know about aircraft components and airfoil what is a cord for example so we need to keep at least a page open on on google where you can see those components you need to know about the weather i know you know a lot of youtubers have said it it's difficult but you need to know about the weather some basic stuff like what clouds bring a rain what happens when the cold front meets a hot front okay basic stuff like that you need to be able to read maps uh, like from the CF, CFS, the Canada Flight Supplement, uh, your VTA map, I'll show you an example. And uh, if you don't want to buy the CFS, these are like $16. They're only valid for 56 days. You can go to skyvector.com and you can get uh, the information that you need. You need to have procedures or to know of procedures and also records like flight log maintenance log emergency procedures so you need to know about these you need to know about physics of flight and this is a good example have a google page open so that you can quickly search if you have a question about a good example what is the bernoulli effect physics of flight you need to know to know about aerodromes what is a registered aerodrome what is a certified aerodrome what is a class f restricted airspace what is military airspace what is an airport so that's in the definition of aerodrome so you need to look at that you know you need to know about communication how do you communicate with the control tower with the owner of a registered aerodrome okay so that's in the cfs and again if you don't want to buy it 
It's on skyvector.com. They're all there. And finally, you need to know about definitions and abbreviations. What is ARPAS? ARPAS. What is VLAS? What is ATF? What is NOTAM? What is METAR? So I did a complete list, one full page of abbreviations. So when I wasn't sure during the exam, I did not waste my time to do a Google search. I had my page. I was able to do it quickly. Now, this is for basic operations. If you do all this, count two weeks, okay? Two weeks to do all this like well. And I, like I said, I guarantee you, you will pass the basic exam with around 75%, maybe even 85%, okay? No brainer. Now, the advanced operation, $10 also. But instead of 35 questions, you have 50 questions. So you have 15 more questions, but listen to that. You have 60 minutes, not 90. So you have 15 more questions, and you have 30 minutes less to answer. And the pass mark is 80%. Very difficult, okay? Um, when, I got, <laughs> when I got my first question uh, in that exam, I was about to give up right there first question but i thought you know what i wrote down number one and then i did number two that went well three went well the rest went not so bad but the first question right there <laughs> i had to write it in my notepad and i went back to it so some youtubers say that the advanced operation uh, exam is different um, it's more difficult yes but it is not different it's the same thing that I just mentioned. And in case you skip right to the advanced operation, I'm going to repeat. And if you guys did listen to the basic operation, then skip to the flight review. For advanced operations, you, have, you need to know the same things. You need, you need to know about the regulations, aircraft components, airfoil, uh, a bit about the weather forecast. We need to know about reading maps, what is the CFS. Uh, use VTA maps, how to read VTA maps. You need to know about procedures and records, physics of flight, aerodromes, how to communicate with the control tower with aerodromes, and you need to know about definitions and abbreviations. Like I said, the difference is that the questions are a little more, diff not really, like uh, maybe a little more difficult, but what is key is that you have more questions in less time. It's very, very difficult. Now, the third part is the flight review, which is needed only if you, you want the advanced operation license, which I have right here. So I have my advanced operation right there. Uh, for the flight review, it will cost you between $200 and $300. I know, <laughs> we have to pay more. And on top of that, if you pass your flight review, you will need to spend $25 on the Transport Canada website to get your advanced operation certificate. So for the flight review, two things will happen. The uh, reviewer will ask you to fly your drone, okay, and do a few missions. So I'll go back to that. But the first thing that he or she will do is go uh, all over your procedures, how to read maps. Let's have a look at that, okay? So when you go to your flight review, bring ID, bring your pilot certificate, bring your drone registration, which is this document over here. With your drone, you're going to fly with the markings, with the certificate marking on it. Uh, bring a landing pad, okay? You're going to impress the reviewer right there. I mean, this is reversible here. $20 on Amazon. Highly recommend it. Like I'm telling you, like I I'm telling you, I don't recommend it. You have to buy it. You're going to impress the reviewer if you in install your landing pad. Um, bring your VTA map. A VTA map for a few areas in Canada is only $16. And you're going to be asked to fly in an area if you open the VTA map and show that where is in the area in terms of aer aerodromes, uh, towers, because you see cell phone towers on those maps, you're going to impress your reviewer. Um, use the NRC website to, um, to show that you did research on the areas where you, you can fly. And this is, I have two sheets here. 
this is for basic operations for advanced operation okay so you're going to be able to show the review your review reviewer that oh you want me to fly over here and this is the controlled airspace so i need to con to contact the control tower uh, actually in advance uh, registry here uh, registered sorry aerodrome is shown also here so you would show the reviewer what needs to be done if you want to fly in that area use google google earth also to um, print the area you want to fly in when you go for your review so that again you should be a reviewer that you are prepared to fly in the area and you know what's in the area like electrical wires a river fences uh, huge trees so i did that um, know the rules about who to contact if you want to fly and again you use this and what you should have and i'm not sure if i will find it quickly i have so many sheets here important telephone numbers i put here all the aerodromes and airports and heliports there's even a casino in my area so there's a casino heliport i have the phone numbers so in case i have a flyaway i'll be able to call the control tower or the operator opr for the area where my my drone may be picking off okay so need to, so you need to know about the rules finally when you are going to fly say out loud what you are thinking okay for example you say okay i'm taking my drone out of the box i am doing a visual inspection to see if it's in good condition to see if my props are solidly solidly attached to the motors um, I am going through my checklist so say that out loud and finally finally key advice use the review your reviewer gee I cannot pronounce that word use the guy as an observer very important they're going to ask you to fly missions okay one mission might be go over that barn over there and let me use here this little box little house here okay you're going to be far away still within the visual line of sight VLOS but being far away you have your remote controller your drone is coming on let's say on the right side of the barn you will not be absolutely sure if your drone is past the barn way too too much past or you're going to hit the side of the barn so ask the rev reviewer to stand 100 meters on the side and to give you the signal when your drone has passed the barn you're going to earn a lot of points by doing this don't be shy use the person as an official observer i did that because there was a tree i was asked to fly around the tree the tree was far away my drone was very small and i wasn't sure if i was past the tree or right lateral to the tree so this is it guys uh, i showed you here a few of the documents i have bring what i said to your flight review study what i said for the basic operations the advanced operations use two monitors a notepad and like i said you are going to pass the exam one final note the advanced operations is difficult so if you fail the first time you will only succeed the second time if you took notes for the advanced operation when there is a question you have no idea like my question number one that i had uh, i could not even do a google it was unsearchable okay so if you, there is a question you don't or many questions you don't know quickly write the question so that if you fail next time you do the exam you are going to succeed the second time okay so guys i know it's a long video but thank you for watching uh, like i said i did all three i succeeded so um, my final words if you have any questions put them down below i'll be happy to help you to get you prepared and ready for the exams and the flight review. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye, guys.